Hey guys, it's Merle. Thanks for checking in to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to try to convey to you how to set up a proper mix minus to Skype from Voice Meter Banana. Now, some of you may be asking, why do I want to do that? Let's say I have a podcast. And in that podcast, I utilize Skype, maybe for a co-host or for guests to call in. So what I want to be able to do is I want to take the audio from Skype and introduce that into my mix for my podcast. But in return, what I want my Skype caller to do is I want them to be able to hear everything that's going on in the show. Otherwise, I couldn't have a conversation with them. I want them to hear me and my voice. I want them to hear any audio that I may play, whether it's intro music or some type of audio clip, you know, that I brought in because it has something to do with our discussion. I need them to hear all that. So what I need to do is I need to be able to take the mix of all that minus the audio coming from Skype and send it back. Because what I don't want is I don't want my co-host or my guest to hear themselves, but I do want them to hear everything else. That's why we call it a mix minus. We're taking a mix of all the audio minus the audio of the Skype caller and sending it back. So let's first start and see how I have everything set up. What we have here underneath the system sound setting is some um, virtual inputs and outputs. Right here for playback, under playback, I have two virtual inputs. So what I can do is Skype, when you install it, Skype, excuse me, voice meet or banana when installed gives me two virtual inputs so that I can route audio into Skype. And here you see those two inputs right here. Now, if you right click on one of those inputs and select property, you'll see I can change basically the title. I forget what the default is, um, but the default text, I don't know, but I changed it to say voice meter channel four and voice meter channel five. Because if you count one, two, three, four, five, you'll see four and five. These are the virtual inputs coming in to voice meter. All right, so that's how I got those labels when they show up later. The same thing goes for some virtual outputs. When you install Voice Meter Banana, you get two virtual outputs. Again, underneath recording in the sound section, if I right click on this and hit properties, you'll see I can label that whatever I want. What I did in order to make it simple is I labeled it B1 voice meter input, B2 voice meter aux input. So B1, you'll see under the main section of voice meter is this channel right here, and B2 is this channel right here. These are those two virtual outputs. I just wanted to make it easy, all right? Hopefully you're following so far. Now let's take a look at voice meter. Hopefully you're familiar with it. If you're not, I'm just going to give you a quick, brief overview here. Right here, you'll see several channels. These first three channels are hardware-based. So if I go over here and I select, you'll see here I've got an, uh, an M-Audio Delta 1010 card, so I can select any of those inputs. Um, I have a Presonus um, I think it's called an Audio Box i2. That's actually how I get my PR40 audio into my PC, and that's what I have selected right here. So you'll see Personas PR40 is what I have it labeled. So I've changed this channel to say microphone. That's my microphone coming in on this channel, and you can see that I've successfully set that up because the audio meters are bouncing up and down as I talk. So I'll pause and they start dropping. So this is my microphone channel. The next channel can be an iPad, it can be audio from an iPhone, it can be audio from the PC that Voice Meter Banana is running on, it can be a second PC. Um, just as long as you have an audio or a sound card capturing that audio, you can route it here. And that's what I've done over on this channel labeled a podcaster PC. That's a secondary PC that I have. And the audio is coming out of the sound card on that PC 
into my M Audio Delta 1010 LT card on line five and six. So I have that selected here. So if I played audio on that PC, it would come into this channel right here. Now let's move on over to the master section right here and look at the virtual outputs because that is how we're going to send audio over to the Skype application. And what we're going to do is we're going to send that audio out the B2 channel. Okay, so remember that. The B2 channel is how we are going to send audio from Voice Meter Banana to Skype. Now let's take a look at Skype and see how that's configured. So if you go over to Options Audio Settings on Skype, you will see this section right here. The first box is labeled Microphone. That is where we select the audio input into Skype. So we have to select the output from Voice Meter Banana. And remember, we're going to um, send everything, all of our mix, to Skype from Voice Meter Banana using the virtual output B2. So you'll see on this drop down list, I have selected the B2 Voice Meter AUX input. Okay, so anything that's being routed to this virtual output from Voice Meter is going to be picked up by Skype. And you can see that because my voice is registering. The volume meter here is bouncing up and down within the Skype application, you can see it bounce up and down. So I'm successfully getting my microphone's audio out of Voice Meter Banana and into Skype. Next, what we see is how do we get the audio from Skype into Voice Meter Banana? So under speaker, we have selected Voice Meter Channel 5. Remember, I showed you that I made that label up. So I created that label and I selected it here. So now all the audio coming from Skype will be routed to this channel right here in Voice Meter. I have it labeled Skype PC. And I can prove that when I play the sound. And as you can see under that channel, its meters bounce up and down and you can hear that. So that's telling me audio is successfully being routed from Skype into Voice Meter Banana. Now, where does the mix minus come in? So, in order to send a mix of audio to Skype, I have to route it from Voice Meter Banana channels into the virtual output B2. And here's how I do that. So, to route my microphone's audio that's coming into Skype on this channel right here, channel 1, you will see I have this B2 button selected. What that does is it basically says route the audio from this channel to the B2 output. And as I talk, again, you can see my meters are bouncing up and down here in the channel. And if you look over here under the master section for the virtual output B2, you can see that the meters are bouncing up and down. If I deselect that B2 button in the microphone channel, you will see now no longer are those meters bouncing up and down because the audio is not being routed to that B2 virtual output. Okay, and you'll notice that when I did that, also over here in Skype, the volume meter is no longer bouncing up and down because my microphone's audio is not being routed to the virtual output that is selected here in Skype. So I will select the B2 button again in this channel and you'll see here in the virtual output, it, it the monitor is reading. So the, the levels are going up and down. And again, the meter here within Skype is bouncing up and down. So that tells me I successfully routed my microphone's audio through virtual B2 on voice meter into Skype. Are you tracking? If not, pause this video and rewind and start over again. But hopefully, I'm... Um, it's making sense. So right now we've successfully routed my microphone's audio to the virtual output and got it into Skype. Next, we've got these next two channels and we'll go to the third channel here labeled podcast or PC. So I have some, basically it's a sound cart that when I press a button, there's some audio assigned to that button and it would play through this channel right here. And how I get that 
again routed into or over to virtual B2 is I've selected that B2 button right there. You can see that podcast or PC channel go all the way down and you'll see B2 that is highlighted. I have selected that basically saying take all the audio in this channel and route it to virtual B2. If you go over two more channels, I have it labeled Skype PC. That is the audio coming from Skype. And how, what I did here is under speaker section, under options, audio settings. Remember, all of the audio coming from Skype is being routed to that channel. In order to ensure there's not an echo, I don't want to route that audio coming into this channel to B2 because the B2 output is being routed back to Skype. So how I stop that from happening is I make sure that this channel, Skype PC B2, is not selected. So when I, when I select the play button, you will see. Now, you were like, hey, wait a minute. Why did I see that bounce up and down over on the B. Okay. I confused myself there for a second. So when I did that, I hit play. You see the meter here under Skype PC channel started reading because it heard it. But when I click that, you'll see right here under the B2 virtual output, I'm going to stop talking and watch. The meter won't will not read because the audio is not being routed to the virtual B2 channel. Here we go. See that? So, because I do not have the B2 button underneath the Skype PC channel selected, that audio is not being routed. The audio from my microphone is, the audio from the next channel is, because you see the B2, the audio from the PC, uh, podcast or PC is, because I have a B2, the audio from what I have called uh, Hangout channel is being routed, but the audio from Skype is not being routed back to Skype because I did not select the B2 button here in this channel, so the audio is not being routed back to Skype. Hopefully that makes sense. If you watch this two or three times, it should. Um, this it's, it's a hard concept to grasp a hold of, but once you start to understand Mix Minus and the more you work with it, the easier it becomes to understand. Hopefully all this made sense. If you got questions, just leave me a comment below this video. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up, share it out, um, and look forward to um, additional instructional videos kind of telling you how to do some things with voice meter, especially the macro buttons. I've already got a video up that kind of introduces you to macros, and you'll see the macro buttons down here. Um, I'm going to kind of explain those in greater specificity in future emails, especially some of the uh, some of the newer things that I've just done, like um, the FX voice robotic button, the boom and sizzle button, and the ducking button. So look for those videos, and if you have any questions, let me know. Until next time, thanks again for checking out my YouTube video.